When I was in high school, the only thing I really cared about was finding a girlfriend. And, and I knew that I might have a hard time doing this because I met this girl who knew my older sister. And when she found out who I was, she, she says to me, wow, your sister is really pretty. What happened to you? But so what? Like, I thought that if I was like really funny or really interesting, then maybe girls would still like me anyway. But no, they didn't. And when I go to college, I think things will be different. And you know, they are, I meet lots of girls, but I'm tired of being told over and over that they just wanna be my friend. I don't really understand what's wrong with me, but sometimes I feel like I could be alone forever. And then I remember when everything started to change. I was 26 years old, living in Los Angeles, and I had just finished law school, and I landed my first job at a big law firm downtown. And one night, I'm meeting a friend for a drink, and I'm at the bar in my nicest suit and tie, and this really cute girl with long brown hair sits next to me, so I just start talking to her. No surprise, she's not that interested. But then I just happened to mention that I came here from this law firm where I work as an attorney at law, and suddenly she's a lot more interested in me. She's like talking to me, she tells me her name, which I'll say is Gina. She's smiling, laughing at my jokes. It feels so weird to have this kind of attention from a girl I just met that I can't even believe it. I mean, I'm the same awkward, funny looking guy that I've always been, but suddenly I feel like I've discovered the secret power and I want to go back in time. And I want to talk to my high school self and tell him like, hey, you're going to be okay. You're going to get a good job, wear some nice clothes. It makes a difference. You're going to be fine. The next day, not only does Gina answer my call, but we start planning dinner. Next week is Valentine's Day. And a first date on Valentine's Day isn't usually a good idea. But I suggest it. She says, fine. It's really hard to get a reservation at a restaurant this close to Valentine's Day, but I find one at this really fancy Italian place that only has this expensive fixed set course menu. But it's all I can find, so I take it. When I get to the restaurant, I get there first, um, Gina comes later, and we barely know each other, so things are really awkward. And as we're starting to look at the menus, I see her, Gina get this nervous look on her face as she gets to the bottom of the menu, and she sees how much this dinner is actually gonna cost. So I tell her, oh, well, dinner is on me. Um, I insist. Then the waiter comes over and he asks, well, will you be having the wine pairing for an additional ridiculous amount of money? And I tell her, I, I say, yes, of course we will. And then Gina looks at me and she says, are you sure? And actually, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> because the truth is, this is the first full-time job I have ever had in my entire life. I have seven years of loans from college and law school, and I'm still paying for all these suits and ties that I had to buy for the job. So I can't really afford any of this. I feel like a fraud pretending that I can, but, but I just do it anyway. After dinner, Gina asked me to go to her place. And I'm like, this is the guy I've been trying to be ever since high school. The guy that's got the moves, gets invited up after dates. I feel like a baller. <laughs> when we get to Gina's place, we get to her apartment, Gina goes to the, fridge, the freezer, she takes a bottle of vodka out of the freezer and we sit at this small table in the kitchen and we start drinking straight vodka out of the bottle. We sit, we talk, and we finish this entire bottle of vodka. And, and as you would expect, pretty soon Gina is in the bathroom, throwing up in the toilet. And she's in there a long time, and after a while, I go knock on the door just to make sure she's okay. But mostly I'm pacing around trying to figure out what to do now. When Gina eventually comes out, her hair is wet, like she's just taken a shower. She's crying and apologizing as if she's ruined the entire night. And I tell her, no, it's fine. Everything's fine. But through this crying, she just blurts out, but I told my mom I love you. Now, I don't know when she told her mom this, but at this moment, I realize I need to get out of here. 
So eventually Gina goes to lay down and she falls asleep. I stick around just long enough to make sure she's not gonna choke on her own vomit. And then I let myself out. I can't drive at this point, so I just chain smoke cigarettes next to my car, listening to Ben Folds 5 on repeat until I'm sober enough to go home. The next day, I don't call her and she never calls me. And even though I just blew $1,000 on a dinner and I'm no closer to having a real girlfriend, I feel okay about it. I don't think I'm gonna be alone forever, but I'm pretty sure that a first date on Valentine's Day is always a bad idea. Thanks, thanks very much. <laughs>